Hurricane Katrina caused one of the biggest disbursements of black people in history. After losing so much, why wouldn't anyone ask if we were okay? Nobody ever asked the children how they were doing. So I am. It's been 17 years since Hurricane Katrina devastated the city of New Orleans and the surrounding areas. The Category 5 storm caused 2,000 deaths and displaced thousands. Now the children who survived Katrina are telling their stories and the impact the storm had on their lives in the new HBO documentary, Katrina Babies. Edward Buckles Jr. is the director of the film and is with us now to tell us more. Thanks for being with us, Edward. Good morning. Absolutely, good morning. It's hard to believe this was 17 years ago. You were only 13 when this happened, and it's interesting to us looking back as it, at that time as adults, what the view was from you as a 13-year-old uh, growing up and experiencing that firsthand. Absolutely. I always say that, you know, growing up in a post-Katrina New Orleans, that was my research and research and almost, I guess, development phase of making this documentary because of the fact that, you know, everything that we touch on in this doc was growing up in that post-Katrina New Orleans, you know, just like the violence that that occurred and like all of the trauma that surfaced after the storm. And most importantly, it was the absence of resources and it was the absence of, you know, help when it came to our mental health and wellness. So um, that's what all ultimately led me to even want to make this project. Yeah, so you're, you're addressing the physical and the emotional. 17 years have gone by. Uh, did the community reach out to their leaders to say, these are our problems and you need to fix them? And uh, has that happened? Absolutely. Um, it has been happening literally since um, everyone, well, not everyone, but ever since we returned uh, after Hurricane Katrina, it's been like a crying out for help and resources. But, you know, as you know, um, in, 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 in places like New Orleans, and I'm pretty sure even even our Chicago, you know, we most of the time we move on, you know, with ourselves and we help ourselves. But there's been a crying out, crying out for help, you know, for a long time. I mean, even like in a way this film is even, you know, like a, 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 a a crying out crying out for resources right and a crying out for you know addressing the uh, trauma that occurred in 2005 so have you talked to people who were in this documentary that had not revisited or talked about it since they were children and they didn't realize that how traumatized they were absolutely uh i was one of those people um Actually, year one of making this documentary, uh, I, have a fr I have a friend named Aisha Williams, and when I interviewed her, she broke down and started crying, and she said that, you know, she had never spoken about this a day in her life, and when I asked her why, she said because no one simply ever asked her, and that was a very grounding mo moment for me, and, you know, it it was actually like a validating moment on why I needed to tell this story, because I didn't realize that, you know, she and so many other children had never spoken about this. You know, I knew that I hadn't spoken about it, but I didn't realize that it was a common through line amongst my peers. Well, that's the thing about trauma is that maybe you don't realize you're living with it until somebody sits down and talks to you about it. So is this kind of a relatively new phenomenon that's being discovered that these kids have been living with this for, for all these years? And how do you fix that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, something that I always say is that even if a child, you know, is not showing that they are being impacted during a, I guess, traumatic event or during a, I guess, what, like disaster, right? Um, it's like, it's still important that we put those tools in place and put those resources in place so that once that once that trauma surfaces, they know how to deal with it. Because like what's happening now is that we've been living with trauma, not that we have been, um, I guess, we, 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 we're not like resistance, um, we're not resistant against it. It's just that we didn't even know that it was there. Yeah, so right. imagine, imagine living with trauma that long. Like for example, I didn't realize that I was traumatized from Hurricane Katrina until age like 28 or 29, you know? So I've gotten through all of my childhood and you know, most of, you know, most of my twenties without realizing that I had suppressed trauma. And that's what's happening to like a lot of us. But I think that when you look at the community, I don't think that it's suppressed at all. You know, when you see the violence, when you see the PTSD, the anxiety, the anger and the sadness, I don't think that that's suppressed. I think that that's how we are actually releasing that mm -hmm. trauma. But well, if, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I, we appreciate you joining us, Edward. It's fascinating. Katrina Babies is available now on HBO and HBO Max, and you can see more on social media, Katrina Babies Film. Thanks for being with us, Edward. Thanks, Edward. Thank you so much for having me.